Okay, okay it's uh, 12, and I'm calling this meeting to order. Roll call. Nereida Cantu present. Admin Garza present. Alda Benavides present. Alex Cantu present. Mary Hernandez present. Dr. Sainz, I do declare a quorum. Thank you, Mr. Salinas. Can we please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you, Doc. Next up is the approval minutes for the September 20th. Can I uh, take a, a motion? So moved. Second. Uh, motion and a second. All in favor, keep by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passes. And the superintendent's report. Thank you, Mr. Salinas. The first item on the superintendent's report is um, the enrollment report. The enrollment report is dated October the 4th, 2021. On that day, we had 10,421 elementary students. 13,284 secondary students for a total of 23,705 students, and this number is 2,937 students less than at this time last year. The next item on the superintendent's report is recognition of human resources personnel in honor of Texas Education Human Resources Day. Ms. Ivana Ayala, our Assistant Superintendent for Human Resources, will do this award. Dr. Sainz, before we, we get started with that report, how many kids have uh, signed up for the virtual academy? On the virtual, uh, do you have the exact numbers, Do Dr. Villarreal? I don't want to say the wrong number. I know we're about 200, but I'm not sure we have more or less than that. As of right now, it's 201. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Villarreal. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Mr. Board President, members of the board, Dr. Signs and community. My name is Ivana Ayala, Assistant Superintendent for Human Resources, and today I am here to present our Human Resources staff. Governor Greg Abbott has proclaimed October 13th, 2021 as Texas Education Human Resources Day, a day set aside to recognize and honor the important contributions made by staff who work in the Human Resources Department. The Human Resources staff work hard each day to make sure our schools are staffed with highly qualified employees and that each of our employees have a good work environment. I would like to recognize Norma Hinojosa, our service record clerk, Abimbola Ogunaiki, Human Resources clerk, Valentina Canizales, personnel specialist, Laura Rodriguez, Personnel Specialist. Nora Peña, Certification Specialist. Sabina Lopez, Human Resources Secretary. Cynthia Luna, Assistant Superintendent Secretary for Human Resources. Rosa M. Rodriguez, Human Resources Personnel Specialist Supervisor. Arcelia Alvarez, Human Resources Coordinator. Claudia Davila, Human Resources Coordinator. Rosa Gonzalez, Human Resources Director. Gloria Rodriguez, Executive Director for Human Resources. Myself, Ivana Ayala, Assistant Superintendent for Human Resources. And not pictured, but I would also like to recognize Soila Reina, Personnel Specialist, and Mr. Angel Canales, Human Resources Accountant. Again, on behalf of the Human Resources Department, we would like to thank the board for their continued support. Thank you, Ms. Ayala. The next item is recognition of outstanding service award for principals for the month of September. Mr. Martin Munoz, our Assistant Superintendent for Curriculum and Instruction, will do this award. Good afternoon, uh, Mr. Board President, Madam Superintendent, uh, ladies and gentlemen of the board and community. Uh, today's my honor to recognize some of our outstanding principals and their campuses uh, for their achievements in the areas of reading and uh, school accountability. Uh, so on the first star performance, 
uh, school accountability. We wanted to recognize Ms. Alma Perez, principal at Clinton Elementary, Ms. Belen Martinez, principal at Memorial Middle School, uh, Mr. Rolando Rios, principal at Chavez Middle School, and uh, Mr. Antonio Cano, principal at La Jolla High School, and Mr. Victor Rodriguez, principal at Telma Salinas Early College High School. Uh, in the area of Reading Renaissance, uh, for the first six weeks, we do want to recognize Ms. Mary Guerra, principal at JFK Elementary, Ms. Sylvia Elizondo, principal at Lorenzo de Zavala Middle School, uh, Mr. Leonel Perez, principal at Palmview High School, and Ms. Claudia Gomez Perez, principal at Jimmy Carter Early College High School. So on behalf of our district administration, we recognize these outstanding principals and their campuses for these outstanding achievements. Thank you. The next recognition is recognition of Jimmy Carter Early College High School and Thelma R. Salinas STEM Early College High School for receiving the 2021 College Success Award by GreatSchools.org. Good afternoon again, Mr. Board President, Madam Superintendent, ladies and gentlemen of the board and community. Uh, it is my, uh, my privilege and honor to recognize and uh, also at the same time inform you in the community that two of our high schools were recognized at the national level by the organization GreatSchools.org. Uh, GreatSchools.org recognizes and celebrates public schools across the country that excel at helping students enroll and succeed in college. Uh, in 2021, 1,838 schools from 25 states won the annual College Success Award. To celebrate schools with a multi-year track record of post-secondary post success, GreatSchools.org also added an additional elevated level of distinction, the College Success Award, the gold level. Uh, this year, uh, Jimmy Carter Early College High School and Thelma R. Salinas STEM Early College High Schools uh, were both recognized with this award, this award. Now these campuses, in addition to their, rec uh, their recognition and certificate, will also receive a banner that they will be displaying uh, at their campuses to recognize uh, and celebrate this distinction. So on behalf of the district uh, administration, uh, we recognize these two schools for this outstanding achievement. This is Jimmy Carter's third year in a row that they achieved this recognition. And this is Thelma Salinas' second year. So again, we recognize these principals and their staff for this great uh, accomplishment. Thank you, Mr. Munoz, for recognizing our principals and our schools for all of their work, whether it's reading achievement, the state accountability, or getting kids ready for college and career. Thank you. Our next recognition is recognition of teachers identified for designations through the teacher incentive allotment at Chapa Elementary and Richards Middle School, Juarez Lincoln High School, and Palmview High School. Ms. Ayala, our Assistant Superintendent for Human Resources, will do this award. Good afternoon once again, Mr. Board President, members of the board, Madam Superintendent, and to and our community. House Bill 3 passed on in, I'm sorry, by the 86th Texas Legislature on June of 2019, and it established an optional teacher incentive allotment with a stated goal of a six-figure salary for teachers who prioritize teaching in high-need areas and rural districts. During the 2019-2020 school year, La Jolla ISD was among three school districts in the Valley which participated of 26 districts statewide. La Jolla ISD had 74 teachers identified with designations. TEA approved the local designation system and after the district gathers the teacher's data, they, we then submit it to Texas Tech for data validation. The Texas Education Agency gives final approval of teachers who are recommended for this designation. So this afternoon, I would like to recognize those teachers at the different campuses. With these designations, the teachers have a potential to earn additional monies. If they are identified as recognized teachers, they can receive an additional $3,000 to $9,000 to supplement their pay. Exemplary teachers receive between $6,000 and $18,000. And master teachers receive between $24,000 and $32,000. From Chapa Elementary, led by Ms. Eliamar Lopez, 
exemplary teacher, we have Talia Sobrevilla, Cristina Reina, Veronica Minton, Mercedes Silva, recognized teachers at Chop Elementary, Olga Cantu, Graciela Smith, Yolanda Cantu, Exemplary teachers at Ann Richards Middle School, led by Mr. Tomas Ocaña, principal, are Angelica Flores, Felicia Borrego, Chris Espinosa, Liliana Muñoz, Erin Lumbreras, Megan Hanna, Alonso Trevino, Maria Gonzalez, Anita Ramirez Rivera, Melissa Garza, Criselda Cuevas, Josue Velasquez, Isabel Osuna, Daniela Garcia, Katie Bernal, Crystal Villarreal, Lourdes Carrillo, Silverio Lamas, Ira Martinez, Anita Garza, Elizabeth Guerra, Natalie Spencer Lopez, Fatima Navarro, Diana Portillo, Vanessa Escobar, Master Teachers at Ann Richards Middle School, Kathleen Garcia, Ana Pompa, Denise Gonzalez, Jamie Hidalgo, Viviana Cabrera, Janet Ortega, Consuelo Cano. Recognized teachers at Ann Richards Middle School, Adrian Martinez, Jolene Peña, Luis Ramos, Isaac Mendiola, Isaac Valdez, Mario Garza, Veronica Peña, Cesar Garcia, Oscar Santiago. Teachers at Juarez Lincoln High School, led by Mr. Ricardo Estrada, that are part of our TIA program, include exemplary teacher, Jesus Macias, recognized teachers, Karim Briseño, Isela Garcia, Ramiro Lopez, teachers under TIA at Palmview High School, led by Mr. Leonel Perez, Leonel, I'm sorry, exemplary teachers, Leonel Ramirez, Renzo Tamez, Alicia Alfonso, Baudelia Lerma, John Grassi, Maida Moreno, Ahmad Harb, Portia Abad. Recognized teachers are Esperanza Medina, Jacob Banda, Myra Garcia, Annabel Lopez, Berta Amaro, Claudia Guerrero, Leticia Ramirez, Serafín Hernandez, Jackie Moran, Jose Chapa, Ines Alaniz, Michael Requenes, and Claudia Bassan. Again, we'd like to thank our school board for their continued support in all of the programs that we have here at La Jolla ISD. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Ayala. Congratulations to all our exemplary, recognized, and master level teachers that do an incredible job in the classroom. And of course, thank you to the principals that support them. Mr. Salinas, this concludes the superintendent's report. Thank you, Dr. B uh, Dr. Salinas. Next up be discussion item number one, purchasing cooperative fees report. Good afternoon, Mr. President, our board of trustees, Dr. Sainz, and our community. Um, this purchasing cooperative fees report that uh, you um, have in your agenda packet is mandated by Texas Education Code 44.0331. Uh, our administration is required to come before the board annually and report to you our cooperative management fees paid to uh, the purchasing cooperatives we participate in. So the attached spreadsheet you have details the purchasing cooperatives that we participate in, as well as the management fees that were paid during the 2020-2021 school year. If there are any questions at this time, we will go ahead and address them. Anybody have any questions? Thank you. Okay, thank you. Next up, the item number two, discussion of accelerated instructional plan for the 21-22 school year.
Good afternoon, Board President, Madam Superintendent, ladies and gentlemen of the board. Uh, we thank you for this opportunity to give you an update on our district's uh, learning acceleration plan for the 21-22 school year. However, before we do begin the presentation, let me preface this uh, presentation by saying that this is in addition to uh, the green instructional practices, uh, the just-in-time interventions, uh, the conceptual refinement lessons that are taking place on a day-to-day -day basis in our, in our classrooms. So when it comes to the learning acceleration plan, uh, early on in the summer, late in the summer, uh, we did come before you to share uh, what our plan was for this upcoming school year. Uh, on the screen, you will see our learning acceleration plan for the elementary. So this is what we proposed and plan to deliver this school year at the elementary level to close that uh, learning gap. Uh, we did propose an early start program. It was a two-week program in which we would focus on enrichment acceleration activities for tier one students. Uh, we proposed an in-school tutorial program in which we would address literacy skills recovery uh, during the instructional day in which 45 minutes would be allocated to enrichment enhancement opportunities uh, to provide small group uh, intervention and student acceleration. Uh, support staff uh, would pull out students to minimize the class sizes uh, in the regular classroom. We also proposed an after-school tutorial program in which we would address math skills recovery, uh, tier two students, those that required an urgent intervention, and tier three students, those that were at risk of retention, would receive two hours of additional instruction on Mondays and Tuesdays. We would then have a computer-based tutorial program for our tier three students in which they would receive two hours of interventions through a combination of software and in-person supports on Thursdays and Fridays. We would also open up our schools on Saturdays for a Saturday enrichment camp in which tier two and tier three students would uh, receive four hours of tutoring, again through a combination of software and in-person supports. And we would also uh, offer a summer recovery program in which it would be a 20-day recovery program for those students that had uh, continued to struggle throughout the school year. So as a presentation on the status, uh, for the Early Start program, uh, the Early Start program was piloted at one elementary campus uh, at the start of the 21-22 school year. Uh, this program will continue for the upcoming school year. Uh, the opportunity will, will be there for all campuses uh, to initiate an Early Start program and get their students, uh, provide their students accelerated instruction. Uh, when it comes to in-school tutorials, uh, campuses have begun implementing their, uh, the schedules uh, with time allocation for enrichment enhancement during the school day. Uh, CNI is conducting campus uh, visits to monitor the implementation of the activity and provide additional supports to our principals and their teachers. Uh, after school tutorials. Campuses have begun implementing the after school tutorial uh, calendar and schedule. Uh, CNI is also conducting campus visits to monitor the implementation of uh, this high dosage uh, tutorial activity. Uh, campus staff have also been trained in best practices to accelerate uh, learning. Uh, when it comes to computer-based tutorials, uh, campuses have begun implementing the uh, an after-school uh, computer-based tutorials on designated days, uh, twice a week after school. Uh, CNI is conducting campus visits to monitor the implementation of this activity, uh, and campus staff have been trained on best practices to accelerate learning using the program resources. Saturday enrichment camps. Some campuses have begun implementing Saturday computer-based tutorials. Uh, campus staff have been trained on best practices to accelerate learning uh, using this program resource. And uh, when it comes to our summer recovery program, uh, we will start planning with principals and stakeholders in early spring uh, to plan for an, an effective summer school program. Uh, moving on to the middle school, uh, again, uh, during our summer presentation, this was what we proposed as a way to mitigate and close that uh, the gap, the learning gap. Uh, we did propose an early start program, uh, just like the elementary, uh, two weeks before the school year began. Uh, early bird tutorials uh, for those students that arrived early on campus, uh, they would be provided computer intervention programs. Uh, an after school tutorial program, just like our, our elementary plan. Uh, in-school tutorials to address recovery during the instructional day. Our middle schools were planning to provide tiered instructional or create tiered instructional groups uh, based on ongoing formative and summative assessments. And then targeted instruction would be provided by teachers and tutors to provide small group intervention and student acceleration. 
Uh, we would also provide computer tutorials for our Tier 3 students on Wednesdays and Thursdays after school. And it would be through a combination of software and in-person supports. Saturday enrichment camps for our Tier 2 and our Tier 3 students. And also that summer recovery program. So this is the status as to where we are right now uh, in the implementation of that plan. Uh, for the Early Start program, uh, the program was not piloted during the 21-22 uh, uh, school year, uh, but this is uh, an ongoing plan uh, for the upcoming school year. Uh, In-school tutorials to address recovery during the instructional day. Uh, campuses have begun implementing learning recovery sessions during the instructional day. Uh, tiered instructional groups have been created based on ongoing formative and summative assessment. Targeted instruction is being provided by certified teachers to provide small group intervention and also student acceleration. Uh, CNI staff is conducting campus support visits uh, to monitor the implementation of the activity and again, uh, provide support to the principals and their teachers. Uh, for after school tutorials, uh, campuses have begun implementing after school tutorials to address math, reading, and science skills. Students receive one hour of interventions through a combination of software and in-person support uh, and uh, Monday, uh, Monday through Thursday. And campus staff have been trained in best practices to accelerate learning. They are also uh, starting the early bird uh, student tutorials. Uh, campuses have begun implementing the early bird uh, school uh, computer-based tutorial programs Monday through Friday based on teacher or, stu or, or tutor availability. CNI is conducting campus visits to monitor the implementation of this activity, and campus staff have been trained on best practices to accelerate learning using program resources. Mr. Munoz. Yes, sir. Do you have an update on that, President? Just a note, Ms. Espi Ochoa arrived in our meeting at 1221. Welcome, sir. Ms. Ochoa. Hello. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Munoz. You may, yes, sir. Welcome, Mr. Choa. We are presenting on our learning acceleration plan. We are on page eight now. So the Saturday enrichment camps. Uh, some campuses are planning to implement the Saturday computer-based tutorials. Uh, campus staff have been trained in best practices to accelerate learning using the program resources. Uh, funds have been allocated to the campuses so that they can uh, provide uh, this uh, opportunity to their students at their campus level. And just like our elementary, uh, we will start planning uh, with principals and, st and stakeholders in early spring uh, to provide that effective uh, summer school program to our students. And this will be an additional 20-day program. For our high schools, uh, this was a plan that we proposed to you uh, in, the, in the summer. Uh, for example, in the area of Algebra 1, which is a high-need area uh, based on our last year's scores, uh, we would provide focused interventions using, utilizing the silver lining uh, curriculum. Uh, strategic learning for high school mathematics course. Uh, it would be an intervention algebra one end of course uh, section that would be provided for those students that struggled uh, in eighth grade or that did not meet the uh, end of course criteria for algebra one. The courses were being, uh, were, were, we were planning to uh, create courses for these students that would be embedded into their regular sc uh, school day calendar. Uh, algebra one quarterly campus parent engagement meetings uh, these are comprehensive high schools uh, through the uh, Resiliency School Support Program plan uh, in which, uh, again, we would meet with the parents of these students that were struggling or had not passed their Algebra 1 end of course and provide them with uh, supports that the parents can in, uh, implement at home to help their children be more successful. Uh, In-school tutorials to address math skills recovery during the instructional day in which we would create tiered instructional groups based on ongoing formative and summative data Targeted instruction would be provided by Algebra 1 teachers and consultants uh, to provide small group interventions and student acceleration. We would also offer an after school high dosage tutoring program. Uh, this would be provided to address skills recovery. Tier 2 and Tier 3 students would receive an additional one hour uh, of instruction after school. Uh, we would uh, provide uh, support through the Ingenuity course software uh, for end of course. Uh, for credit recovery and college readiness. Summer end of course and credit recovery programs. Uh, we would also make available the Texas Virtual School Network for those students that wanted uh, learning acceleration opportunities. The two week summer bridge program for incoming freshmen that are attending our academies. Uh, Saturday enrichment camps. Uh, purchase a CERT software for ACT prep and, TS and TSI prep at our early college high schools. 
and College Board resources and smooth software for advanced placement and college readiness preparations. So that was our plan. Uh, this is where we are in the implementation of that plan. Uh, when it comes to in-school tutorials, intervention enrichment courses are scheduled within the, the campus course master schedule uh, during the school day. Uh, students that struggled with math in eighth grade, students that did not meet their Algebra 1 in the course criteria, uh, were registered and are participating in these courses. And uh, CNI staff are uh, conducting campus visits uh, to monitor and provide support in the implementation of this activity. Uh, after school tutorials. Uh, the majority of campuses have already begun implementing after school tutorials. Uh, the CNI Executive Director, Ms. Melinda Flores, is conducting campus visits along with Mr. Alfonso Rodriguez, our math uh, coordinator, uh, to monitor the implementation of the activity and uh, provide uh, training and support to campus personnel. Uh, Saturday enrichment camps. Uh, campuses are planning to implement Saturday camps for in the course, credit recovery, AP and TSI prep. Campus staff have been trained in best practices to accelerate learning uh, based on curriculum uh, resources. And when it comes to our summer school program planning, uh, planning sessions will be in with pertinent stakeholders. Uh, we'll start in the spring semester to again provide that high dosage, uh, high quality uh, summer program. Now, additional supports or considerations that we did not present on uh, in the summer that have now become available to, to our school district. So at this point in time, our district is currently in the planning stage uh, in the implementation of the additional day school year calendar uh, for the elementary campuses. Uh, the ATSI calendar uh, addresses summer learning loss, which can have a profound effect on students from low-income backgrounds. Uh, the cumulative impact of summer learning loss has been shown to create a, a gap of up to three grade levels for low-income students by the fifth grade. So House Bill 3, uh, passed by the 86th legislature, added a half-day formula funding for districts that add, that add up to 30 instruction days uh, to any other elementary schools uh, starting with the 2021 school year. So uh, if districts, uh, or, or rather the, if you as a board approve this calendar, well there's three options that you can approve. Uh, one is option one of voluntary summer learning. So campuses hold a traditional 180 day uh, school calendar and they have up to 30 days for something additional uh, for targeted subset of students such as a summer enrichment. So in other words, the ADC would fund the Early Start program and then the summer program. They would provide funding, additional funding for that. Option two would be an intersessional calendar in which campuses conduct a regular can calendar of 180, 180 days spaced out or the full year with intermittent breaks for targeted rem remediation with a subset of students. And then option three will be a four-year redesign. Uh, campuses conduct a revamped 210-day calendar, and they change daily schedules to decrease instructional time, so it can be spread out over additional days, and then increase time for planning and student uh, brain breaks. So those would be uh, the options. When it comes to the ATSI, and uh, with your permission, we would like to bring this up later on as a discussion item so that you can uh, provide us some guidance and some feedback as to how you would like for us to proceed, uh, proceed with this ATSI uh, planning year. And then a, an, an additional consideration at the high school level uh, with the planning of the summer bridge activities. Uh, when, we, uh, when in the past we have traditionally recruited students uh, in, the, in the spring, uh, we will then need to move that to the fall uh, to give an opportunity for those students to uh, select their high school program and get an opportunity to come in and uh, start learning and choosing those uh, programs and certifications that are available to them at the high schools. That's an ad additional considerations implication. Uh, any questions or feedback, ladies and gentlemen? I don't have a question. I would just like to have a request for the after school tutorials. If at our next meeting we could have a report by campus of how many kids are participating in the after school tutorials. Uh, elementary, middle, and high um, to see um, how well that's going. Yes, okay. and, and what are the hours after school? Because I understand that certain campuses are holding extended hours for little ones, so I would like to know. Sure. That's fair. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Munoz. 
Next up, item number three, uh, discussion on the La Jolla ISD local remote learning program and update criteria for La Jolla ISD virtual academy. Good afternoon, Board uh, President. Good afternoon, Board of Trustees and Dr. Science, and also to our community that's viewing us at this time. I would like to go ahead and present on the an update on the La Jolla ISD Virtual Academy. One of the things that I do want to go ahead and share with you all is we went ahead and updated the criteria for kinder through third grade. And the reason behind that is because we wanted to make sure that we were meeting the needs of our students and our community. And uh, with that update, what that entails is that we went ahead and removed the criteria for end of year, uh, TPRI, or TexKia, and the math EOY assessment or BOY assessment. Meaning that that leaves uh, our students that uh, apply or parents that apply that they need to go ahead and meet these two criteria that are listed. Basically that students must not have 10 or more unexcused absences in the preceding school year and also have earned a greater C or higher in their foundational curriculum. What we wanted to share with you all as well is the uh, current enrollment in our academy. As you can see right there, there's a breakdown by grade level for the elementary, giving us a total of 266 kids, or I mean, excuse me, parents that applied, 198 students that qualified, but do know that every day applications are being reviewed and as of right now, we have 201 students that have qualified. And then you also see the breakdown there for the English instruction and dual instruction as well. This slide right here basically shows the student enrollment for secondary. You have it there from sixth grade all the way to 12th grade. As you can see, as of right now, we have a total of 103 applications that have been submitted with 28 that have uh, been approved and students that, that qualify. No change has been done to this criteria for the exception of our seniors, uh, the Senior Academy, and that will be discussed at a later time today. We did wanna go ahead and review the instructional schedule with you all. As you can see, we do have a, in a synchronous instruction that's being provided for a minimum of 240 instructional minutes. Now, we have also combined the asynchronous instruction for the elective classes. For the synchronous instruction, for those 240 minutes, it's gonna be for our core content areas, reading, math, science, and social studies. Moving on, what you can see here is the kindergarten instructional schedule. As you can see, we have a teacher that's doing the English, and we also have a teacher that's doing the dual uh, instruction. So you're able to see there the schedule for each of those classes in itself. Again, they start at 7.35 and end at 3.05. Next you have also the first grade instructional schedule. And here as you can see, we do have an English teacher and we also have a dual teacher that's uh, meeting the needs of our students. Keep in mind that any elective class, PE, music and art, that is being done asynchronously. Then for second through fifth grade, you have the schedule right here. What we have here is 
uh, one teacher that's teaching second grade. They're doing the English language arts and math first, and then they transition in the afternoon to our dual language uh, students. And you see the uh, schedule right there. Now you're able to see right here as well that the elective is being done, all electives are being done asynchronously. As far as middle school, as you can see, you have the schedule right here. We start at 8.10 and we end at 3.50 with the electives being scheduled in the afternoon. As far as attendance, attendance is being taken at 11.30 a.m. Uh, that way we could ensure that the four hours of synchronous instruction is occurring. And then also, uh, the coding for attendance is uh, synchronous present, and it's an S. And then for coding for an absence, it is a W. We did work closely with computer services to make sure that the coding is being done accordingly. As far as counseling services, we do have our LPC counselors that are assisting these students. They will be doing group and individual counseling as well. We will be utilizing, or we are utilizing the Naviance and Mindfulness program as well. As far as the staffing, do know that these numbers reflect for elementary a total of seven. These numbers have increased as needs uh, have arisen. We have hired more teachers or we uh, gotten teachers to go ahead and service our students. At the middle school also right now we have a total of three different teachers that are teaching uh, coming from the their current campus. Let me give you an example. At the elementary, I mean at the middle school, we have a teacher that's teaching algebra. Uh, algebra. Uh, we have them teaching ELA uh, and science and social studies, which is the core. However, they're coming from different middle schools. This is something that was planned with our middle school principals and has been working so far. As far as uh, meal distribution, as you can see right here, we are providing that to our students in our community. They are being distributed at the three comprehensive high schools. We are serving breakfast and lunch, and the pickup time is from 10 to 11. And our students do need to show a, uh, an ID, a meal pass, and we did work closely with computer services to get this up and running as well as operation the operation department and the CNS department. So with that said, that concludes this presentation. Do you all have any questions that you all might have in regards to the virtual academy? The only, the only thing that I, I have, and it was this last um, slide on the meal distribution, just because I was looking at the, the schedule of lunch. Uh, students can pick up their meals from 10 to 11. Of course, I would be an adult, right? Uh, is there any way that parents could pick up like pre-packaged pre, you know, meals for the week mm -hmm. just because perhaps there's not an adult that can stay behind with the child during that lunch frame, time frame? That's a good recommendation. We could definitely look into that. Uh, we'll make a note of that and then uh, communicate it to our parents if that's the route we're going to go. Hopefully we could have more participation that route. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Any more questions, guys? Thank you, Dr. Yeah. Next up, the under discussion items, uh, the first six weeks average daily attendance. <clears throat> Come on in, Dr. Villarreal, thank you. Good afternoon, Dr. Science, members of the board. Um, I'm here to discuss the um, first six weeks attendance report and where we are at um, at this time. Okay. Um, if we look at our attendance report, uh, remember uh, last school year we did discuss 
what uh, the goals were for each of the levels for elementary, middle school, high school. Um, at this time, we have been struggling with our attendance, as you'll see. Uh, the first one, the first slide that I'm gonna go ahead and show you is on the high schools. The goal for all of the high schools is 95%, and as you can see, La Jolla High School has an 85.18, Juarez Lincoln, 83.70, Palmview, 84.17, College and Career and West Academy, those are special schools that we're working with very closely, and of course their attendance is significantly lower than the comprehensive high schools. So when we put them all together and we do the um, um, total um, attendance for these schools, uh, we are at 74.26. Okay, for the specialty schools, these are the STEM schools, the early colleges, uh, Jimmy Carter Early College is standing for the first six weeks at a 90.09, Thelma Salinas 91.74, Early College um, High School at 90.58, and the Academy of Health Science. These are a little bit higher, uh, but we're still not where they need to be. They, um, their goal is 98% for these schools, so we're still working closely with these schools. So we move on to middle schools, and this is where they stand for the first six weeks. Savala Middle School, 90.44. Chavez, 90.99. Uh, Science, 86.92. Memorial 92, Memorial 92.56, Ann Richards 87.66, Garcia Middle School 90.14, Salinas Middle School 90.95, and Trevino with a 89.11. So combined, their effort is 89.85 for the middle schools. Um, the, the rate or the goal for middle schools is 97.5. So as you can see, some of them are in the 90s, but we still have some work to do, okay? So we look at all the elementary campuses, and their combined, their combined attendance rate is 87 point, can't see the number at the bottom, 87.53. That's where all the elementary, um, I don't want to go through all of them, but you have all of the, the totals that's, that are written there under ADA. Um, that's where every school ended up for the first six weeks. So as a district, our goal is to be at 95%. And right now, at the end of the first six weeks, we are 87.47. So um, we're still trying to get the students there. So let's go ahead and discuss what are the possible reasons that, um, that students are not coming in and why we have all of these absences. Dr. Villarreal, before you move on to that, what was, yes. what's the goal for elementary? It's the same as middle school, 97.5. Okay, thank you. So what are some of the reasons for absences? These are coming directly from our principals. Okay, um, of course the first one is when students test positive, and we've had quite a few cases, they test positive, they have to quarantine, so they have to be at home, so they're out for at least 10 days. So that gives us a lot of absences. Um, sometimes when students come to school and they develop uh, COVID symptoms, they start coughing, they have a fever, a running nose. Uh, the staff has been trained to identify some of these symptoms, symptoms, and so they go ahead and contact the parent. The parent has to take them home. And so, again, more absences. Um, close contact notice. Um, when we send those uh, close contact notices, there's a student in the classroom that um, is coughing, sneezing, and then ends up that he does have COVID. We need to send out, the campuses send out uh, close contact notices to the students that were close around the same, that student. And so those students need to quarantine for at least seven days. If no symptoms develop, then they can, they can come back. But if they do develop some type of symptoms, they have to stay home for 10 days. 
So again, that's more additional days that students are absent. Um, we still have a lot of parents who fear, who have the fear of the positive COVID-19 parent, the notification letter. Um, we must send out notification letters to all the parents when there's a case in a particular school. So when we send those out, all the other parents get scared and they stop sending their, their children to school. So this particular one goes with the next one. This is amplified in campuses that are housed together. I did get a phone call from one of the, par one of the principals who said, if, for example, there was a child that was um, positive um, at Kika de la Garza Elementary and the notices were sent out, all the kids from Diaz de Arreal, there's a lot of students who are also absent because they're in the same place, so the parents have that fear. Um, students are sent home from school with COVID-19 symptoms, okay? Um, students sent home sick, but parents cannot send them or take them to the doctor immediately. A lot of our parents work, so they say, I cannot, I cannot take my child to, to the doctor. So they wait two or three days to just go get them tested or to find a place that will test them. So then they have to wait for the result. If the result is negative, then they of course bring it back. And if it's not, then they have to stay in quarantine for a longer period of time. So that, that adds on um, to the amount of absences at each of the campuses. Um, parents are still skeptical about school safety in regards to COVID-19. They're still, you know, like, uh, children are still getting sick. How can I send my child? So these are all valid concerns that principals are getting at their, at their campuses. Um, students having to stay to take care, this has come up several, several times. Students having to stay to take care of siblings, parents who are diagnosed with COVID. So some of our older students who are high school students, um, I had a situation where a dad called me, he's a truck driver, he was gonna be out of town, and he says, my high school daughter has to stay home because her mom has COVID and the two younger siblings have COVID and I have no one else to watch them. So everyone is absent on those days. So it's, it's a difficult situation for a lot of our, a lot of our families. Um, we also have situations where children become exposed outside of the schools. Hey, they went to a party, they went somewhere. Then the parent found out that someone at that party had COVID. So the parents, out of extra precaution, they go ahead and they keep them. They keep them for a couple of days to um, test them, to check and see if they develop any symptoms. And so that's also going on. Um, adult students um, that have jobs and children to support, they must be absent from school. And so we have that situation, especially at our, um, at our CCC campus. Okay, any questions on this slide? And I'm sure there's a lot more reasons, uh, but these are the ones that I collected from the principals. I would like to add, Dr. Villarreal, that in a meeting with the TA deputy commissioner with superintendents, they did talk about statewide the lower enrollment and poor attendance rates at districts throughout the state. So TEA is looking at some attendance waivers for districts. However, they are not finalized yet, but they do see overall statewide low attendance rates. And so they are w looking at some ways to help districts. However, they have not come with any final criteria but they are looking at different kinds of attendance waivers. That's very good. I know that as a district, we're also working on more attendance incentives as well to provide to the campuses. And I met with um, several groups of principals this morning and we, we talked about what type of incentives. But then in, throughout the discussions, one of the things that they mentioned is we can offer them so many incentives, but if the kids are still sick, they still can't come. And so, you know, we're always, we always go back to, you know, students coming down with the virus and, um, and so that the only way, uh, some, some of the responses I was getting from the, um, from the principals this morning is that the parents are saying, when asked, what can we do to make things better? 
they're saying that they're not going to send because we still have many, many students who are still at home. They're not being homeschooled. They're not enrolled in another campus. There's the fear of the parents that don't want to send them in. And so um, when asked, the parents are saying until the vaccine becomes available for the children from 5 to 11 years old, that they're not going to send them, even though we're doing the warning letters, even though we're doing everything in our power to get the students to come in. It's, it's a very difficult situation, and you have to have some type of compassion with, especially those of us who have had relatives who have had COVID. We understand how these parents feel, you know, and a lot of them are saying, I don't care if he falls behind. Um, I'd rather get him caught up later, but I don't want him to be dead. And so that's the responses that we're getting from parents. And so I'm sure all of us can, can, can understand what situations they're under, because we can only push so much. And so we look at the, at the um, next slide. Um, and on this one, these are all just the efforts that our student services department is making. The attendance coordinators, um, we help to conduct co visits. We help by making those phone calls, by assisting with uh, talking to parents. Um, they also have helped with delivering devices uh, to those students that are on remote conferencing. They help by um, assisting attendance clerks who are brand new and are still kind of learning um, what they're supposed to do to make sure that the reports are accurate, helping them run those reports every day. Um, whenever we see a number that's significantly low, um, we'll see like all of the elementary counts and then one Everyone's in the 80s and one campus will be like in the 60s or 70s. We immediately send someone out there and call them and find out, okay, what happened here? Uh, to be able to identify what are the issues that are going on that are causing this particular campus to be significantly lower than other campuses. And so um, I've listed some of the activities or some of the uh, ways that we assist uh, the student, coordinate, uh, student attendance coordinators and also the student prevention facilitator and the supervisor. These are um, Mr. Um, Isidro Casanova and Iram Science, who are my truancy officers at the district level who assist a lot also with attendance. Okay, so I went ahead and I listed all those and, and it, the print is really tiny and I can't really see it. Um, so if you can go ahead and, and just follow that. Does anybody have any questions on this slide? Any questions on this presentation? Well, I know that everybody's been working really hard, Dr. Villarreal. Um, is it a district goal that we've set for ourselves that maybe we're being so harsh on ourselves that maybe we need to be a little bit, I mean, we still need to have our high expectations because that we do have. Mm -hmm. But like, we always beat up on ourselves so much because we raise the, the bar so high. And like you said, we can offer all the incentives, we can give every, everything that we can on our behalf to all our campuses, but at the end, the virus is still out there, the fear is still very alive with everyone around us. We have educators are exhausted. So what can we do to, to support student services department and most of all our campuses that, you know, have worked so hard to, to bring in our students and yet we can't because of all the dynamics that you have mentioned and many more that have not been mentioned. Correct. What can we do to support you? Well, when we meet with principals, that's one of the things that they bring up. It's like, I'm never going to make it because the goal is so high. Perhaps when in our meetings, Dr. Science, we could revisit some of those goals. Um, I know that they are, they are exceedingly high. Uh, nobody has met the goal for six weeks, uh, any other weeks. And so they're, they're far from meeting the goal right now. And, and yes, the campuses are doing everything in their power. Um, but one of the things that we can do, yes, we're working on, on providing those additional incentives. But um, we can probably, I don't know if, if well, you could. Well, one of the things I do know in looking at attendance for last six weeks, for example, I mean last week and the week before, is that they are, it is now in the low 90s. So the first six weeks, we I think we, it was at 80, 87, Correct. but it has, it has, it's steadily climbing. I think as parents are becoming a little bit more comfortable, uh, we are having a few lower cases, positive cases. 
So for the past couple of weeks, we have been in the 90s. But of course, we will continue to look at it and monitor. I guess what uh, I'm saying is the, the last thing I would want is if we don't meet the goal that that they get reprimanded some sort verbally or what have you because they have a lot of mm -hmm. things on their table. You know, and I think back even like last week when we had our team building uh, meeting and they said, well, what does a coach do at the time that something, a plan's not working? You revisit it, you re mm -hmm. strategize. And so I'm just thinking of all the dynamics that our educators and our admin are having to face right now. Maybe we do need to revisit and have some realistic goals and still maintain in the 90 degree, but not so high. Do we have comparable data from surrounding districts and statewide data? I don't have actual numbers, just uh, conversations, uh, anecdotal conversations with superintendents. And like I said, uh, the, the meeting with the uh, deputy commissioner where he talked about the lower attendance uh, data among different uh, districts, but maybe that's something that we can bring for you all at another presentation. I, I think that it's expected for the first six weeks. You know, I'm not surprised because uh, the first six weeks when school started, for all the reasons that you mentioned, people just weren't ready. They weren't ready to send their kids and and they were afraid and with reason. And so I think that, that the campuses, you know, they're doing really well considering that exactly. all the things that are going on. I think that them being in the 80s, when we sit down and look at the information, we're like, wow, you know, they're, the high schools are in the 80s. We didn't expect for them to be that high because of everything that's going on and so many students get, getting sent home. And it's been a very, very difficult, a, a trying time this, this first six weeks has been very, very difficult uh, to get them where they're at. And then um, I know that the enrollment, they kind of go hand in hand. We bring the students in and um, they come in for a couple of days and yeah, the enrollment grew, but then the students get sick and so now they're having to be out again. And so now it affects our attendance. So it's kind of like working with both has been very, very difficult to just get them all where they need to be. And so, yes, um, I know that there's a lot of activities that we're planning right now, not just the incentives that I mentioned, but to increase the enrollment as well. Um, I don't know if you, um, you've seen, and we, I was looking at the enrollment this morning when I met with all the principals, um, that we started off with, um, at the beginning of the school year, um, August 16th, we were at 18,000 students, and now we're like very just, sh uh, I don't know how many is it, Dr. Science? students away from being at 24,000. And so we're almost at 24,000. So that is steadily growing, yes, it's, it's growing, we're getting there, but we keep going back to the absences and, and the students are getting sick, they have to be out, and all kinds of situations. Um, the parents are, are, you know, some of these students' situations are going on where they're, they're losing their parents. And I mean, just horrible, horrible things, stories that we hear, you know, of, of things that are going on. Um, I just spoke to a parent last week, the dad is intubated, and I'm calling the mom to get the kids to school. And so, uh, uh, you know, how? She's like, how, how? You know, no puedo, she's like, no puedo ahorita, no puedo. She, she couldn't even think of that. So it, it's a very difficult situation, and we're gonna continue working at it, um, exploring new ideas, new ways of, of getting the students to you know, come to school every day and hopefully stay enrolled with us as well. I was thinking just to, as a thought after SB mentioned that, maybe looking at the elementary schools, because there are some schools that have, that are very, uh, they have very small numbers in terms of their differences. So maybe celebrating those uh, campuses because they worked really hard to keep the kids, keep the kids, keep the kids. Because I was noticing like Escandon is only minus 27, uh, Garza is minus 28. So maybe celebrating those campuses that really worked hard to keep all their kids enrolled. And then in the middle schools, uh, Ann Richards uh, is only minus 36. So maybe uh, celebrating them and their staffs so that they can see that, you know, their hard work and the pressure and all that, that it paid off, you know, that they didn't lose that many kids. And then when the others see that, well, they'll say, you know, well, maybe we can do that also. Or, mm -hmm you know, celebrate whatever they did, or obviously they did something because they didn't lose that many students. So um, 
I mean, I think that, that everyone, you know, your department and the schools, I really think that they're doing a good job and the fact that, that uh, the attendance is, I mean, the enrollment has grown. Uh, it were only 2,000 less than we were, you know, uh, compared to when we started, which was about 6,000 or something like that. So that alone says that, you know, people are becoming more comfortable. I think for the first six weeks, the data is very good. I personally, this is just my opinion, would not recommend changing the, the goals right now. I think that just uh, reassuring people that we're in the right direction and then continuing to work with the parents, understanding the situations, and then pushing when we can and backing off when we have to. And we've had plenty of um, recruitment activities um, to to go ahead and continue uh, encouraging the parents. I know that Blanca is working very closely with us right now, our department, um, helping us come up with some student and some um, uh, student and staff testimonials. Um, we have one of our principals who has her child in her own school, and she was a perfect uh, person. She offered to do the um, testimonial, and we're working on those testimonials to get them out there to the parents so they can see if this school was safe enough for this principal's own child, then it should be safe for everyone. That's the message that we want to send out there. So we're, there's a lot of things that, are, um, that we're working on right now to um, increase enrollment and to um, um, increase the attendance rates also and help uh, principals. Uh, but we're continuing to do all of that. Hopefully, second six weeks when I share that, the information will be a lot, a lot better. Not as gloomy as this time around. We, I hope that uh, for everybody's you know sake, I know that the whole uh, everybody's suffering because of numbers. I hope once the state collects all the data from all the districts, hopefully they can help us out in some way, in some form. Uh, so hope for the best. And that's I think that's a reason why they're looking at the attendance waivers. However, they did say that they that a district would not be able to apply for the waivers until the end of the year yeah. because they want to make sure that they look at all the data first and then come up with some waivers. So uh, they did they did say that. I do want to say that all of our principals have been amazing because they each have their list of their kids that have not shown up yet and they keep in communication with those parents. So our principals each know know who are my kids that are at home and they do call those parents and check up on those kids so our principals are doing an amazing job of staying in communication with their kids that are not enrolled yet I met, I did mention can I just mention real quickly dr. science I know you um, spoke about it at our last meeting the project care package I mentioned that to the principals this morning I haven't met with a, a Palm View cluster I only met with the La Jolla and the what is Lincoln Cluster? But they loved the idea of, of taking out, taking those um, little uh, booklets out to the parents. Um, what this project is going to do is each principal is going to come up with a, with packages for each of the students that have not shown up to to school, whether for whatever reason. And we don't want to expose our staff. So what we're going to do is just, they're going to put them in like little packages and they're gonna place them out to outside of their doorstep. They love the idea because it's gonna send the message. We talked about the letter, what the letter should include. You know, we miss you at school, we're waiting for you, that sort of message. And it's gonna be with a letter from La Jolla ISD and a couple of the um, booklets, um, a math booklet, um, math, writing, whatever they have available. And we're going to get with Arcadio to see if we can get more, um, more of those booklets so that they can go ahead if they don't have enough at their campus. They love the idea because of the message that that's going to send out there. Thank so you so much. that's another thing that we're working on. Thank you so much, Dr. Villarreal, for all of the incredible work that you're doing with our principals and our teachers. And thank you for all the support that you're providing for them. Thank you all for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, moving on, guys. Consent agenda. Back in the agenda motion. Uh, Mr. So, President, I had I had requested on bids on the number one to see if we could have a discussion on that. You, you want to pull out item number one yes, on, under please. contracts? Yes. Under bids. Yes. Under bids or contracts? 
Bits. Okay. Okay, so can we attain a motion with the rest and then we're coming back to that one? So moved. Second. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor, you can pass aye. Aye. All those opposed, motion passes. We come back to under Congress number five, approval of to amend the agreement between the district and region one education so center moved. for substitute teacher placement and employee management service. So moved to approve. Second. second. Motion and a second. All those in favor, you can pass aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion passes, and now we're back with bids number one, approval of air and surface sanitizing equipment for school buses, CSP 2022-5. So move for discussion. Second. Second. Okay, so it's open. We have Mr. Lloyd Loya here that is prepared to respond to any questions. And I think maybe Mr. Loya, we can start by describing the equipment that we're purchasing for each of the buses under this bid item. Yes, ma'am. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Board President, Board of Trustees, uh, Dr. Isela Sainz. I will discuss the, I guess, the dimensions of the device that we are that we sent out for, for specs and for bid. I do have a picture over here. So the dimensions of the, of the device are it's a two and a half inches wide and 14 inches long, and it will be installed inside our existing HVAC ductwork. Uh, so during this process, we researched and, and spoke to the school districts to see what they were installing in their school buses. Um, this, nothing came close to this technology and this type of device. For the simple fact that it's gonna go inside the ductwork, it's extremely small, and it, it purifies over 400 feet of uh, square feet uh, inside the school buses. It goes where, Mr. Loy? Inside the existing HVAC ductwork, ma'am. Okay. Uh, the other school districts were installing, uh, I don't wanna say huge, but they were in the middle of the bus. They, they were have, having to, to change the structural of, of, of the bus and kids could tamper with the device. This will be hidden in time where kids cannot uh, be able to access it. Anything else on the... Are we installing it ourselves or are they, this company is gonna install it for us? So, Ms. Um, Ms. Hernandez, this is a turnkey project. Mm -hmm. So the total price of this project is 304,996 with 95 cents. So the company uh, brings in their equipment and they do the installation. They do it, okay. Thank you. Is there any maintenance, Mr. Loya, to these things or, or how does it work? Um, for, for the most part, it has a, you know, a five-year warranty, uh, Mr. Cantu. I will have my, my staff that, that will go out there and, and inspect these buses on a, on a weekly basis to make sure that they are working uh, correctly. And if something goes down, we just report it and they'll send us a new one at no cost. Is it like a filter or what is no, it? No, ma'am. No? No. So there's uh, not like a replacement that we have to go back and? No, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. So move to approve. Yeah. Second. Okay. A uh, motion a second. Also, very nice. Aye. 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 Also opposed? The motion passes. And we're under letter B, bids number eight. Rejection of air and service sanitizing equipment district-wide TSP number 2204. Can I take a motion? Can we get a little feedback? Yes. Yeah. Uh, can we have Ms. Sylvia Zapata provide information on the on this item? So move for discussion. Thank okay. you. Okay. And it's open. Well, on this item, uh, we're coming before our board for rejection. Um, based on a concern regarding the specifications, we sought legal counsel with Mr. Ben Castillo and uh, the district determined that in the best interest of the district, we will modify the specifications so they're more broad and we'll be able to simulate competition with the intention of acquiring the best value to the district. What's an example of something that you're gonna to need to change? One of the items that, or one of the terms or specifications that we will change is the degree of um, air sanitation. We had a particular spec 
indicating that um, the system should eliminate 99.9% of viruses. And so as a result of lab testing, we don't know for a fact that that can be achieved in the number of hours that we specified. So that's one of the, one of the specifications that will be modified. Ms. Zapata, how is that gonna set us back in the installment? I mean, I just worry about these things should be in place already. What's the timeline? Like the, time the, timeline the timeline for advertisement is three weeks. So we'll advertise this Friday and the following Friday, and by state law, we have to wait two weeks before we open. So as soon as we uh, open those um, uh, submittals, we'll be able to prepare an agenda item and come before the board. So it'll be about four weeks. Will that put us uh, very much backlogged? Or? A few weeks, but in the best interest of the district, it's the right thing to do considering um, ramifications if we were not to make those adjustments with those specifications. So move to approve. Second. Thank you. I have a motion? Second. And a second. Also, Brandy, can I say nine? All opposed, motion passes. Next under B, uh, letter B, bit. sorry about that. Number nine, recent previous board action uh, for universal whole life plan on approval, revised recommendation, voluntary insuring benefit plans, CSP 22-3. Doc, can you say something about that? Yes, we have Mr. Eli Rodriguez here. Is there a motion for discussion? So move to discuss. Second. Second. Thank you. Mr. Eli Rodriguez is going to provide information on this item. Thank you, Mr. Rodriguez. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Mr. President, members of the board. Uh, our community. Uh, my name is Ilar Rodriguez, Director of Risk Management and Employee Benefits. And <clears throat> we have a, an item here to present to you in that our current vendor chosen by our school district back uh, on September the 20th will not make our uh, enrollment deadline. So we bring this item to you to make a change uh, on, on this product only. Mr. Eli, is there a reason why they they just came back and said that they wouldn't be they wouldn't be able to. Yeah, according to the vendor, they're unable to meet the deadline because of what they call the built. The built is you know managing the data and preparing the data to be able to communicate with our our, our company that's going to be doing the enrollment. So there's going to be communication between their systems, and they're unable to put that together you know in on a timely fashion for our enrollment that we want to start on the 18th with of October. The, with this cost us more or is it the same amount that uh, no the, the the pricing is comparable so I feel confident that this vendor will uh, will help our school district and our employees okay. so move to approve I have a motion second and a second of the video can say nine motion passes next up under the C business um, color selection for La Jolla ISD Guillermo Flores Elementary Roof and interior renovations project so move Second. Second. Oh, sorry. Yeah, motion and a second. Motion for say nine. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Anybody have questions? I just have a comment, and it's not related to this, but on Flores Elementary and Pica and Benavides, if we could have an update at the next board meeting of where we are with the status of the of the renovations or whatever is being done. The yes. timeline. Thank you, Dr. Benavides. Okay. Next item number three, uh, approval for proposal submitted by engineering firm to oversee the Ahoy ISD softball campuses renovations. So moved. Second. And a motion and a second. Motion for you to say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion passes under letter number C, business and final number four, approval of the proposal submitted by engineering firm to oversee the Ahoy ISD Esther Fund 3 uh, Canopy Project M2 Engineering PLLC. Motion to uh, discuss. Okay. I believe that. Second. second. And a second and it's open. Mr. Uh, Jovi Arial has some information on the canopy projects. Good afternoon, Mr. Board President, members of the board, Dr. Science. Uh, this item is to approve uh, the selection of uh, three engineers, structural engineers, to oversee the canopy project. We have uh, both the canopy and the playground equipment uh, project under the ESSER three funds. Uh, on those pictures, you can see 
more or less what these uh, canopies will look like, uh, which is the 30 by 40 with the uh, steel columns and the fabric canopy. And this will be uh, a canopy for every single campus. Is this uh, a fabric like a, like a, what do you call it, Alex? What do you like call? canvas or? Like a canvas or, or something like that? Or what is it? Or is it a, what is the material for the, fa for the canopy? It's, it's, it's a common fabric that we use or that they use uh, for either playgrounds or canopies like that. I, I know we used one at uh, Palmview High School. There's one already there in place with that type of canvas. So basically it shields, you know, from the sun and from the elements. And, and is the reason, and I could be wrong, is the reason for having three different engineers is just to move the project along so that everybody is getting them more or less at the same time, or what's the reason for the three? Yeah, so selecting the multiple engineers for the project will help with the ease of the workload, um, better design and project timelines, and more efficient project management for, for all these uh, canopies and playgrounds. And what is the, the timeline for these canopies? We want to get them in by, by next year, by before the next school year starts. What's the purpose of these canopies? When we put them on the ESSER application, we refer to wanting to have outdoor, either outdoor eating spaces, because we are going to purchase tables uh, for underneath. So it would be outdoor eating spaces and also outdoor learning spaces. I was going to say that. To promote social would, distancing. Would we to be promote. able, I thought, I thought these were also, were these going to be on top of a playground to provide some, uh, some protection for the kids? No, the playground equipment is separate, but we are uh, proposing that the playground equipment have a similar canopy on top. Mr. Rivera, let me just ask you, and if we would go with one engineer, would we be saving money or it's still going to be the same cost regardless? It, it should be the same because they, uh, they proposed a lump sum. It's not a percentage. It's, it has to be a lump sum because it's uh, ESSER three funds, uh, federal money. So it's a lump sum, so they're, they're charging like per canopy. Mr. Rivera, so every, every engineer is going to have 14 different campuses? 14 different uh, campuses. So correct. every school is getting one? Every school is, is going to get one. What kind, of I'm sorry. what kind of warranty does it have? I mean, we haven't guys? specified that because we haven't gone into the, the design and specs, but when the engineer um, works on these uh, canopies and the playground, we will specify some type of uh, warranty. Um, I, especially on the fading, I know we spoke to Dr. Sainz about yeah. it. Um, she, she asked the question on the fading, uh, because I know some of this fabric can easily fade. Um, so we want to specify some type of warranty uh, against the fading. Uh, so in case it fades within that time frame, they can come and replace it. It usually takes like three or four years for it to start. About to two, fade. two or three. Yeah, especially if it's a dark color. Yeah, when yeah, the it's darker. a dark color, it fades a lot faster. Mm -hmm. Right. Can you bring the information on the warranty uh, or warranties to the board once you get the the engineers to to look at that? Okay. Yeah. And the other one, Mr. Rivera, just to make sure that every school has the same uh, canopy and uh, make sure that, you know, the same size and the same everything, that way, no, it it's all uniform. Back, yeah, it's all yes. uniform. It yeah. won't come back and say, hey, but these got a bigger one than ours and stuff. Well, I know that, for example, Juarez Lincoln, when I visited the campus, they were in dire need of, 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 of that for, for lunch spaces, or there was some space that they weren't able to use because there wasn't any shade. So I know some schools, like maybe the high schools, may require a little bit bigger because their enrollment, yeah, I, but... I, I believe we're doing two canopies at the high schools, at the okay. high school level. Two of those 30 by 40s or one bigger one. Okay. Nice. Just so long as all the high schools are the same and yes. all the middle schools are the same and all the elementaries are the same so that we don't get the concerns that Mr. Cantu was talking about. Correct. Okay. Correct. So move to approve item uh, number three, number four, number five. Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second to items up to number five. All those in favor, you keep by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion passes. Next up, be number item number six, approval of proposal submitted by a careful firm to oversee the La Jolla ISD Esther Funds Canopy Project. So move. I so move. Second. Okay, motion and a second. Those in favor, you keep by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. I guess we have the same guys, items seven. Can I make a motion, yes. Mr. President, yes. to approve items under business and finance seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve? Okay, I have a motion. Seven to twelve. I'll second you, 
Mr. Do Charles. we have any any pictures on those playgrounds? I, yeah. Yes. And that's just going to be for the elementary, correct? These are going to be at the elementary level, um, and these are these are options. We have one option, and you can see Mr. Cantu on the fabric uh, shade. Um, what we're really specifying and looking at is the ages. You can see some of these are just five through 12, and some of these are gonna be, also include uh, ages two through five. So because of the um, pre-K three program that we, that we started, we're looking at these uh, play sets to have minimum uh, two to five and five to 12. Um, and then the capacity, at least minimum of 50. So that was one option, and I'm sorry for being too fast, but this is the other option. Um, and again, these are just, uh, it's not gonna be exactly like that, but um, more or less the same features and, and size. Costs, do we have an estimated cost? Uh, we have, yes, we have a budget of, I believe, yeah, 50,000 uh, each. And each elementary is getting one? Each elementary, yes. That's amazing. Would they come with the uh, surfacing? Uh, with the what? I'm sorry. Surfacing around yes. the, the border, the border and the surface. Yes. I bet you it's exciting for the elementary. Of it's course. Exciting for all of them. Yes. Okay. It's Way a really overdue. Nice Way overdue. Yeah. Any more questions, guys? No. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Thank you. Went on to their D, instruction and uh, student services, discussion and approval of the... Did we, did we vote? I made a motion and yeah. Coach I think makes we it. voted. Yeah, I went. First. We Mo voted? Mm -hmm. yes. yes. Okay, maybe I missed it. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Motion to approve items 1, 2, and 3 on tab E. Okay, under E. Okay, we're showing them on D. Oh, I'm sorry. That's, that's okay. Discussion on the approval of 177 four-year seniors for cohort 2022, 2021, sorry, so allowed much. into the La Jolla ISD Virtual Academy. Second. I have a motion and a second, also very good thing by it. Aye. 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 As opposed, motion passes. Lastly, you have a motion for items. Motions for items one, two, and three under tabulation E, human resources. I have a motion. Se second. And a second, also very good thing by it. Aye. As opposed, motion passes. It is 122, and it's time at such as section scores 551071, 551072, and 551074 to executive session. Okay, it's uh, 202, and we are out of executive session. I'd like to make a motion on tab H, items 1 through 5 as discussed in executive session. Second. second. And a motion on the second, also fairly because we're saying by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion passes. It is 202. Meeting adjourned.